Hello and welcome to another episode of On The Sofa. We're so glad to be welcoming 2023 here at Scotland Shop and we're really looking forward to all the exciting things we get to share with you over the next 12 months. With that in mind, there is no better way to start the year than with an exploration of Clan Sinclair, our January Clan of the Month. As well as sharing the stories and interesting facts that we've found, we love hearing from our customers about their links to the clans and we're always happy to be corrected if you think we've made a mistake or missed something important. We hope that even if you aren't a clan member, you enjoy learning about the people, places and the stories behind them. So let's get to it. The traditional pronunciation of the name Sinclair is said to have been Sinclair. Clan Sinclair also encompasses family lines which take the name Sinclair or Sinclair. If you're named Budge, Klein, Groat, Lyle or Wares, then you're also likely to be associated with the clan. Today there are clan members found all over the world, but the clan Heartlands are usually considered to be in Caithness, the Orkney Islands and the Lothians. Let us know in the comments where you're tuning in from today. If we go back to the very beginning, the story of Clan Sinclair starts not in Scotland, but overseas in Norway in the time of the Vikings. It is said that the Sinclairs are descendants of Rognaval, the mighty Jarl of Orkney and Romsdal in Norway, who was born in 835 AD. In 921, his son Rollo signed a peace treaty with the King of France, which made him the first Duke of Normandy in return for agreeing to stop his Viking raidings. Those familiar with the TV series Vikings might remember a character called Rollo who is roughly based on this historical Rollo. This treaty was signed in the town of St. Clair, hence the family name of St. Clair or Sinclair. Although evidence for all of this early history is a bit shaky, whatever the exact roots of the clan, we like that these early links are a nod to the international nature of the clan in more recent years and the orders that were placed for Sinclair Tartans from all over the world. A nod to the early French influence on the history of the clan can be found in the cockerel on the clan crest. Cockerels are found on the roofs of Norman churches and it is possible that the inclusion of a cockerel, Chanticleer in French, is a play on the name of the clan. The logic behind this is that the Chanticleer sounds a bit like Chanterclair, which translates to English as Sinclair, hence Sinclair. Maybe you can make up your own mind on that one. Finally, in the 11th century, it was time for some Sinclairs to leave France and make their way towards Bonnie, Scotland. Again, the exact process of this move isn't clear from historical sources, but it is likely that they came via England, having accompanied William the Conqueror in 1066 and fighting for him in the Battle of Hastings. One theory is that a William of St. Clair accompanied St. Margaret to Scotland for her marriage to Malcolm III. Another is that Norman Knight came north to seek their fortune under the reign of David I. What we do know is that Henry of St. Clair was made Lord St. Clair and given lands in Haddingtonshire in 1160 and that Sir William of St. Clair was given the barony of Roslyn in 1280, both titles which remain within the St. Clair family today. These two are the first of several William and Henrys we will encounter in our deep dive into the clan's history and I don't blame you if things start to get a bit confusing. After getting themselves established in Scotland, the Sinclairs engaged in activities typical of leading families in the Middle Ages, that being fighting in battles and trying to gain lands through alliances and royal favour. Notable clan battles took place between the Sinclairs and members of Clan Gunn, Clan Murray and Clan Sutherland, as they fought for territorial supremacy. Another Henry, son of the William who was given the barony of Roslyn, started off supporting the English under Edward I, but changed his mind as the struggle for Scottish independence became paramount and shifted his allegiances to Robert the Bruce, fighting for him at Bannockburn. This close allegiance with the royal family continued with his son, another William, who accompanied Robert the Bruce's heart to fulfil his final wish of reaching the Holy Land on crusade. Unfortunately, they only got as far as southern Spain before William and other members of the party were killed. Today, William's tomb can be found in Roslyn Chapel outside of Edinburgh. William's grandson became Earl of Orkney through his mother. His name too was Henry. This Henry is an interesting figure in the 1980s. 
Several books were published which claims that Henry was a Knights Templar and also that he was sponsored by them to make voyages to North America almost a hundred years before Christopher Columbus. Much of the evidence for this came in the form of some rediscovered documents, including letters and maps which most modern historians have dismissed as a hoax. There have also been debates surrounding the identity of some of the carvings at Roslyn Chapel, variously believed to be the North American plants and thus proof of the expedition, or simply stylized renditions of wheat and strawberries, which could have been found in Scotland at the time. Despite the questionable credibility of this story, it is possible today to visit a monument to the alleged, alleged landing site of Henry Sinclair's expedition to North America at Guysborough, Nova Scotia. The third Earl of Orkney, another William, was granted the Earldom of Caithness in 1455 in return to handing over his claim to the Lordship of Nithsdale to the King. That meant that the clan now controlled lands in Orkney, Caithness and Lothian, establishing the heartlands of the clan territories. But in 1470, the Earldom of Orkney was also handed to the Crown. King James III had promised it to his father-in-law, the King of Denmark, as part of his wife's dowry. However, it was never claimed and remained part of Scotland. So, by my calculations, that's now four Williams and three Henrys. Hope you're managing to keep up. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm already lost. <laughs> One of the most gruesome episodes in the clan history took place in the 1570s, after a period of conflict between members of Clan Sutherland, John, Master of Caithness and son of the Earl, tried to make peace with the Sutherland's allies, the Murrays. This did not please his father, who imprisoned him in the clan seat at Castle Sinclair, Gurnigo. Different versions of the story exist, but one says that after a period of starvation, John was fed only salted beef and no water, causing insatiable thirst. Another is that he ultimately died of famine and vermin, which I think you'll agree sounds like one of the worst ways to go. The conflict with the Sutherlands continued for many more decades. In the late 1600s, 6th Earl of Caithness, this time called George, was forced to sell his estates and they fell to Sir John Campbell of Glenorchy, who married the widowed Countess. However, the rest of the family weren't best pleased by this Campbell seizing lands that had belonged to the Sinclairs for centuries, and forces led by George Sinclair of Keith, a descendant of the 5th Earl, claimed the title and estates. George first tried to take the estates by force, but was dramatically defeated at the Battle of Altnamarlick. When it is said, so many Sinclairs were killed that the Campbells and their supporters could cross the river without getting their feet wet due to the number of bodies. That's pretty grim. Isn't it? After realising that the force wasn't going to work, they turned to the law instead. In 1681, the Sinclairs regained the earldom by order of Parliament and they still hold the title today. In more modern times, Sinclairs have made their mark in the fields of film, politics, sport and the media, not just in Scotland, but also in Canada, the USA and France. The actor Gordon Sinclair played the lead role in the iconic 1981 Scottish film Gregory's Girl, whilst Canadian footballer Christine Sinclair is the highest scoring international player of all time and is the only second footballer ever to score at five World Cups. Forget Messi and Ronaldo. The English inventor Sir Clive Sinclair was a pioneering inventor who played an important part in popularising the miniature home computer and the pocket calculator. He also invented an early electric car, which wasn't quite as popular as it had a top speed of 15 miles per hour, <laughs> needing recharging every 20 miles and had batteries which stopped working in cold weather. Not ideal for Scotland. I don't fancy one of those. No. <laughs> the current clan chief is Malcolm Sinclair, 20th Earl of Caithness. He succeeded to the title in 1965 and sits as one of the remaining hereditary peers in the House of Lords. The Earl has a distinguished political career, holding a number of governmental posts under Margaret Thatcher and John Major, including the, the position of Minister of State for the Railway and Roads from 1992 to 1994. His father, previous clan chief, held the position of land agent and manager of a state at Balmoral Castle, which meant that a young Malcolm spent much of his childhood in the presence of the royal family. 
That's cool. That's very cool. Upon the death of Queen Elizabeth II, he offered a personal tribute to her in the House of Lords, describing her as another ordinary mother as well as the Queen and making her clear love for the environment of the north of Scotland. Now that we have introduced some of the people associated with the clan, let's turn to the places. If you're ever planning to visit a site with a link to the Sinclairs on your next Scottish road trip, you really are spoilt for choice. We have already mentioned a couple of these sites, but let's explore them in more detail. Roslyn was already mentioned earlier, as this is where one of many William Sinclairs is buried. However, it's famous for much more than that. As well as being known as one of the finest late medieval chapels in the whole of Scotland, its reputation has spread in recent years thanks to Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. I won't give too much away, but it's believed by some that the chapel crypt contains a sealed entrance which leads to a vault that contains not only the Holy Grail, the treasure of the Knights Templar and the mummified head of Jesus Christ himself. Oh. If you visit today, you won't be able to see these treasures as the entrance to the hidden crypt has never been found. Well, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Um, but you can marvel at the other features which have been inspired which have inspired a series of artists and authors over the past 600 years. The chapel's most famous work is the elaborate apprentice pillar, a highly decorated column. Legend states that when the master mason was away, his apprentice carved the pillar. When he returned, the master killed the apprentice in a fit of jealous rage. The faces carved elsewhere in the chapel are meant to represent enraged master and murdered apprentice and the apprentice's grieving mother. Another story recorded by Sir Walter Scott is that the chapel appears to be ablaze whenever a St Clair dies. Beyond these series, the chapel and the associated castle are well worth a visit if you're in, in the Edinburgh area. You can even book to stay at Roslyn Castle thanks to the Landmark Trust. That's so cool. You can stay there. I'm not sure if I want to stay. I feel like it would be really scary. A bit spooky. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Mm. If you find yourself further north, you'll find a set of impressive castles with links to the clan. The former clan seat of Castle Sinclair Gurnigo should be at the top of any must-see list if you find yourself in Caithness. It is often incorrectly stated that the site is home to two castles, Gurnigo and Sinclair, but in fact it was just that the original castle was extended and renamed to make its link to the clan clear in the early 17th century. The earliest castle on the site was built by the second Earl of Caithness in the 1400s, before he died at Flodden in 1513. Today the site is ruined, but I think this adds to the dramatic appeal. Perched precariously on the coast, the castle is one of a handful of Scottish sites on the World Monuments Fund's watch list of the 100 most endangered sites in the world, and the only Scottish castle. Since being placed on the list in 2002, support from the Fund and the Clan Sinclair Trust, of which the King is a patron, has supported archaeological investigations and work to stabilise and preserve the castle for future generations. The site is open to the public and we would really recommend visiting. Nearby, there are many other sites linked to the clan, from the ruined square tower of the castle of Old Wick to the Ackergill Tower, Seized by the Sinclairs from Clan Keith several times in the 16th and 17th centuries, the tower claims to be haunted by a woman called Helen Gunn, who was abducted by John Keith on accounts of her beauty and flung herself from the highest tower to escape his advances. That's pretty oh, that's desperate. Sad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Clan Sinclair are also closely linked to the Castle of May, best known for its association with the Queen Mother, who bought and restored it from a derelict state in 1952. Is that the bit that's in, in the crown? In the I was just thinking that, yeah, I yeah. remember that. The castle was probably built by George Sinclair, 4th Earl of Caithness, and later became the seat of the Earls. The castle's name was changed to Barrigal when it was extended in the 18th and 19th centuries. It fell out of the family on the death of the 15th Earl in 1889, and when it was purchased by the Queen Mother, she made sure to acknowledge its close links to the Sinclairs, from restoring the original name to hanging several portraits of Earls of Caithness around the castle. Time to plan a Highland holiday, I think. Yeah, definitely. How so much many places. Um, yeah, it's definitely on my bucket list. As always, we need to end our video talking about our favourite thing at Scotland Shop, tartan. We have five different variations of the Sinclair tartan, 
in ancient, modern and weathered, so there's something for everyone. If you like something on the green side, then the Sinclair Hunting Ancient is a vibrant green based tartan with orange overchecks. However, if red and black is more your thing, then go for the Sinclair Red Modern, which is what me and Lauren are wearing also. Mm -hmm. This one's my favourite Sinclair tartan. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this whistle stop tour through the history of Clan Sinclair. There's so much more we could have shared, but it's hard to fit it all in. Pay a visit to the newly updated clan page on our website as well as our blog post if you want to delve deeper into the clan. You can also test your knowledge on all the things Sinclair with our quiz which will be posted soon. To stay up to date with all of our clan content for the rest of 2023 and beyond, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, email newsletter and social media.